When you sew a beautiful blouse, you become a rap artist. Guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to sew this beautiful, gorgeous blouse. I'm starting with my organza fabric. And as you can see, this organza fabric is wrinkled. We have a lot of wrinkles. And to get this style right, you need it to be smoothened out. So I'm going to give this organza fabric a good press with my Binaton steam iron. Guys, you need a lot of steam. And this steam iron has a ceramic sole plate, which makes ironing easier. And it just glides through the fabric without any wahala. Okay, you can see how it's smoothly gliding over the fabric and getting rid of the wrinkles. Now, after giving it a good press, this is what we have here, guys. No bone, no drag. It's all smoothened out. The next thing I went ahead to do was also give my pattern paper a good press because I don't know, some of you do draft your pattern when it is still folded in. Mm -mm, don't do that. Mm? Okay, now this is my pattern paper. You want to leave a gap of about three inches there, okay, above before your, your main um, starting point. Now from the center, I marked five inches for neck width and I went down and marked four inches for neck depth and I just connected my markings together as you can see now from the center I also marked my shoulder point after marking my shoulder point I went down and marked my boss point and also marked my shoulder point at that point so that I'll have like a straight line everything is all straightened and you know and accurate now from that point I went down by half an inch to get my shoulder slant and I just drew my shoulder that slant okay now next thing i went ahead to do was to draw out my boss point line after drawing my boss point line the next thing i went ahead to do was to mark my boss point plus two inches allowance because this is a free top okay you can add three inches can add four inches I took same measurement at the hem and I went ahead to draw a straight line to connect my markings together. Now from my shoulder point, I marked out my long sleeve measurement, okay? And I drew a straight line downwards. Now the next thing I went ahead to do was I went down by two inches to get the shoulder slant extended to the sleeve area and I connected it to my shoulder point, okay? Now the next thing I went ahead to do was to mark out the circumference of my ankle, okay? Circumference of my ankle divided by two. I marked it out there. You can also add your sewing allowance and I connected it to my ample point, okay? Okay. Now the next thing I went ahead to do was just curve it in. So we have a curve, sort of curved ample, you know, section going on there. Now those other lines that we don't need, I went ahead to just erase it out because we don't need them anymore now the next thing i went ahead to do is at that shoulder point i marked three inches i also went ahead you know around the slant slanted line i also marked three inches like in two other points from the slanted line then i used my french curve i connected my neckline to the three inches point i also told you that i marked three inches at um, two other points from the slanted line then the next thing i went ahead to do was to just use my straight rule to connect my markings together okay if you don't understand what i'm doing just look at if you don't understand what i'm saying just look at what i'm doing <laughs> before i confuse you with my voiceover okay now the next thing i went ahead to do was to erase the other lines that i don't need now this is the front pattern okay this is the front pattern this is my sleeve this is what the blouse looks like okay now everything in the front is still everything at the back but the back pattern just has difference with the neck depth okay so there's no need for another pattern paper i'm just going to show you how to draft the back pattern on this front pattern as well so the next thing i went ahead to do was from that point i went down by one inch the neck depth is still the same thing okay i went down by one inch and i just connected that my one inch neck depth to the neckline okay so we have the front and the back pattern on one piece so but if you are not in for this you can draft different patterns but me i wanted to save my pattern paper so this is what i did so i just packed that back so i know when i'm cutting i know that that is the back and the other side is the front okay so guys, this is what we have here. This is the front and back pattern on one paper. Now I cut out the back pattern first because we're going to cut the back neckline first. You can see we're going to cut the back neckline first before we go ahead to cut the front neckline and the whole front blouse, okay? Now the next thing I went ahead to do guys, I'm just trying to explain to you so you guys don't get confused, okay? 
Now, the next thing I went ahead to do was to place the pattern on the organza fabric. Now, this organza fabric is on a fold and I clipped it with my with office pins and also my fabric clip. So everything is well aligned and there's no mistake. And I just went ahead to cut the back pattern, okay? The back part of this blouse, okay? So after cutting the back part, mm -hmm, I'll bite my tongue. After cutting the back part of this blouse, the next thing I went ahead to do, guys, this is what the back pattern looks like, okay? The next thing I went ahead to do was to prep the neckline for the front part of this blouse. So you're just going to cut out the neckline for the front part of this blouse. The next thing I went ahead to do was to place the pattern on my organza, okay? So after placing the pattern of my orga on my organza, I went ahead to cut it out, okay? You want to take your time. You want to make sure you hold it down with pins and clips so that everything... This fabric is very funny, so you have to be very careful and very patient. Now, this is the front. This is what the front part looks like. The next thing I went ahead to do was to turn it over, choose wherever you want to be the front part, okay? And where you want to be the back part. I'm going to attach my forcible interface to the center part. Now, the diameter of this forcible interface is 12 inches, okay? Then I'm going to use this magic cloth from my Binaton Steam Iron, which helps to protect the fabric, helps to prevent burn. It helps to prevent transfer of gum from the forcible interface to the sole plate of the iron so that gum from the forcible interface doesn't drag the fabric and burn it, okay? Now, after giving it a good press, the next thing I went ahead to do was to add another layer of forcible interface. I want to strengthen the middle of this fabric so that it can withstand the tension of the flounce, the, the whole flower design we are going to put in front. And you guys know that when you are adding two layers of forcible interface, it tends to squeeze, it tends to wrinkle, it doesn't give a good finish. But this didn't happen here because my Binaton Steam Iron has a ceramic soap plate that has this super glide effect and it puffs out a lot of steam so it smoothened all the wrinkles out like there was no wrinkle so it just did a good job with merging the forcible interface to the fabric now i got the midpoint of this circular forcible interface and i just drew a swell just draw a continuous circle no need for measurement just eyeball it make sure it looks a little good okay uh -huh. now after drawing it out next thing you're going i went ahead to do was i went ahead to prepare the flower the flounce okay for the best result work with fabric width of eight inches and work with two inches crinoline i'm showing you one inch here but i later changed it up to two inches because the two inches crinoline gave me the best result although i filmed with the one inch um crinoline but i later changed it you know after i attached it and i didn't like how it looked okay so you're just going to attach the first part of the crinoline to the crease line that's the middle point of the onganza fabric you cut out you're going to flip it over on the fold and you're just going to on the stitch on top of the crinoline line to secure it to the organza fabric. Yeah, so make sure you work with the organza fabric of eight inches in width and two inches crinoline. line, okay? Now, after sewing, I went ahead to gather it with my gather's press footer. So after gathering it, the next thing I went ahead to do was I just followed the, you know, that line we drew, that circular line we drew. I just followed it and I attached the gathered, you know, flounce to the blouse it's going to take you a while so just you know be patient and do it so after gathering it now this is when i remove the one inch and replace it with two inches and you can see how full it looks it's really giving that flower effect you can see you know what we have here guys now this is what we have here this is what the front part looks like the next thing i went ahead to do was for the back part now now this is the back part of this blouse i'm going to turn over my neckline with my bias so after turning my neckline with my bias this is what we have here okay i also did same thing for the front part now the next thing i went ahead to do was i placed my back part from um, right side together you know right side facing each other and i'm going to join from this point all the way to the to the hem and also from this point all the way to the hem i'm also going to turn the circumference of my wrist with the bias tape okay so this is what i took it over to my sewing machine i just went ahead to do all the things i told you i am going to do <laughs> my mouth is paining me <laughs> 
okay guys so after joining it together the next thing i went ahead to do was to use my bias tape to turn over the wrist the circumference of the wrist of this particular blouse okay i did this for both parts that's the left hand side and the right hand side of the sleeve then i gave it a good press so everything is well relaxed and i did this with my binaton steam iron you guys this iron is giving me everything i want okay now i also went ahead to add a little detail to the sleeve so you know just a little drama you know we don't want basic things here okay so i went ahead to gather some fabric and i just attached it to the sleeve i did two layers of it you can see that i'm pinning the sleeve and the shoulder line outwards i'm not doing it inside the dress depending you know the inspiration i saw that's how it looked okay so i just went ahead to pin it outwards and i'm going to sew the shoulder line outwards not inwards okay so i took it over to my sewing machine and i attached from the shoulder line down to the sleeve and this is what we after attaching i also went ahead to weave okay i went ahead to weave and this is what we have here guys you can see how beautiful it looks okay now I did this for both sides you can see everything looks good together now one problem you will face is how will you iron this blouse because of the flaws in front that is where your garment steamer comes in so I filled up my binaton garment steamer with water it has water capacity of 1.4 liters and guys this is a lot so if you have a lot of steaming to do this binaton garment steamer is what you need to get okay so I just put the water tank back in its chamber and I turned on the binaton garment steamer now it 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 heats up within 40 seconds so you don't have to wait for a long time and it puffs out steam continuously for one hour guys it is mind-blowing because some garment steamer they shut down after 20 minutes or 30 minutes but this one puffs out for one hour it has a large steam output okay so it puffs out a lot of steam at a time which easily takes out the wrinkles fast because when there's a lot of steam of course the wrinkles will melt away okay when i was steaming the hem the backing screen gave me support so that the steam can really get into the hem and do its job i also went ahead to steam the sleeve and the back so all the wrinkles will be gone disappear away and guys after steaming this is what we have here a very smoothened out blouse is this blouse not beautiful let me know if you're going to try it out please send me pictures when you create this style you need about four yards of a ganza that if you have my body size and you also need a lot of patience thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next tutorial and yes i was here goofing around and i know this makes a lot of you laugh so i'm just going to keep doing it a win for you a win for me a win for everybody keep sewing i love you bye